observations. Uh, very shortly, we will have Travis Kelsey, the Chiefs' future Hall of Fame uh, tight end, uh, who we've known as shattered records uh, during his time here uh, as number 87 for the Kansas City Chiefs. But before we close out, we're getting ready, though, to go to Kels, uh, and let's pick him up now. Kels joins us. Uh, Travis Kelsey, first of all, congratulations, Kels, on your new deal. Uh, but The to- voice, <laughs> the Kels. Uh, and it was, we're going to get to in a second, it was a pleasure to see you run around today. Oh, yeah. Because it looked like it was your first day uh, in the NFL. It was awesome to see it. Uh, you bring energy to this team. We're going to get to that in a second. But yesterday, to announce this deal, to us, we even mentioned it up here on the set, it seemed like something more. Like you want to build a football career here, but you want to do way more with that. And it looks like signing this deal, you have the ability to do that. Yeah, man, I've, um, I'm, a, I'm a very prideful guy. Um, and you know what? I love this city for everything that it's given, not only myself, but uh, the Chiefs' kingdom. And uh, you feel it every, sing- every single day you walk out of the house. It's not just on Sundays. Uh, this, this city bleeds the, the sea of red. Uh, Monday through Sunday, every single day of the week, and it, and it never it never gets dull, man. Um, and and feeling that in my entire career, uh, as well as uh, having unbelievable personnel and people in this facility every single day to make you uh, excited about coming to work, man. Everything was pointing in the direction of staying here my entire career, and that's what I'm going to try and do. Hopefully, uh, I got my fingers crossed that six years isn't isn't all of it. I can get as many years as I can out of the Chiefs. Uh, over the long haul, but I know that uh, I got I got some job security here for the next few years, and um, I'm happy as hell that I get to come to work here and be a chief for a while. And Travis, in that time, you've really wrapped your arms around this community, um, specifically with your foundation, 87 and running, and also with Operation Breakthrough. Had some big news there yesterday with the new Ignition Lab that you're going to open up. Just why is Operation Breakthrough so important to you, and just tell us about what you're accomplishing with them. Man, I am, um, and 87 and running is still growing and still uh trying to get it to be um, everything that I imagined it to be. But um, I grew a big, big heart for Operation Breakthrough and what they're giving to the, the, the community of Kansas City, um, especially uh, ones that are, uh, need a lending hand, um, the, the disadvantaged youth, um, one, people that, that may not, or kids that may not have the same upbringing. They're just as special as anybody else in this world. And uh, Operation Breakthrough has given that to kids uh, all the way up to eighth grade, um, and you know what? I think it's time that we expanded it, uh, and, and that's what I'm doing with the Ignition Lab is I'm trying to expand it to, to see the, the kids that I've seen grow these past eight years uh, now that are teenagers, um, give them a place where they can work on STEM programs uh, all the way through high school. And never more important than now, brother. Now, 60, uh, 37 touchdowns, 6,500 yards. We laid out all your NFL records already that you set, and Matt and I are going to sneak into your Hall of Fame there's not enough invitations, but once we get arrested, you'll see because we're stuck in there. Uh, so we'll, we'll get there. We'll just sneak in the back fence in Canton. But today was another example. You put on a show. How about a fourth and goal at the 10, and you get the touchdown uh, from your favorite quarterback? The other, And then we saw Sorensen give you a pop, and you're bouncing right up. But I noticed that last year, I told people how you warriored up. You were there on July 22nd last year, and you just kept fighting through it. What about the way you now prepare to play this game and what you've learned going into your eighth season of what you have to do to be ready to now play on a team that plays all the way into February? Um, well, it's, uh, it's really following leadership, the demand uh, to go out there and work, to, to strain, endure, um, and overcome adversity. Uh, it's, it, it's a mentality that we've had ever since I've been here. And uh, I, I learned a lot from not only Coach Reed, who, who's at the, the forefront of everything, man. You want to talk about a guy that doesn't take a day off, um, is in the building every single day demanding that out of everyone else. And um, it trickles down to, to Eric Bieniemy, another guy that's, that's, that's been on everybody's tail at least once or twice uh, for good reason. And that's because, you know, it's sometimes you need, that, you need that spark in you to get you going, and you need that extra encouragement. <laughs> I say encouragement in a good way, uh, to get your tail across the finish line. And it is what it is, man. And, and I appreciate both of them for everything that they've, uh, they've done for my career. And then you throw Tommy Tom, Coach Melvin in there, uh, making sure that I'm, I'm fundamentally sound and I'm doing the right things for the team, man. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing. But it all starts with the leadership up front with Red. 
Or Mitch mentioned your stats and records. I know you don't care about any of those right now, but you've had four straight these seasons with a thousand yards receiving. Just coming now into the latter part of your career, where do you see your career going? What's next for you as a player? What do you still want to accomplish individually and as a team as a player? Um, you know, when I was younger, I used to think a lot about the, uh, you know, what 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 do I need to accomplish, and things like that. Uh, and in reality, it's it's more so just become an everyday uh, everyday journey for me. And just take it one day at a time. A lot of the stuff, uh, a lot of the stuff, the the career long, the year long success, individual success, all that stuff comes after the season. You know, during the season, I'm not worried about getting 100 yards in a game. I'm worried about every single play doing the best I can to my ability. And when you take care of football like that, you you go out there and you play for your brothers, man. Um, I've had I've found some success within that method and that and that mindset. And uh, and I definitely enjoy the game a whole lot more thinking of it like that. So I'm just just taking it day by day. I'm not worried about them all. Uh, I'll let let everybody else talk about that. Kels, you brought up Big Red. You brought up EB, Kafka. They're all thinking of stuff. Uh, This is an offense that's used two tight ends, three tight ends. Throughout your career here, you played with Demetrius Harris. Last year, Blake Bell. What do you know and what can you tell us about Ricky Seals-Jones working with Dion Yelder, Nick Kaiser, the other guys in your room? First of all, I just say uh, D. Harrison and Blake Bell without me having to give a shout out to my guys, man. Uh, the tight end room is has always been family, man. We miss those guys, but right now we're excited about the the, guy, the group that we have right now uh, this year, and that's Ricky Seals Jones uh, coming in, having to learn a lot in, in a very very short amount of time, and uh, he's picking it up, man. I'm I'm happy for him. Uh, right now, the 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 mind is tying everybody up just because of how much information that we're getting and how much we're uh, demanded to do out there on the field. Uh, and, and Coach Coach Reed isn't slowing up one step. He knows that uh, this year it is going to be different, but we, we're going to have to catch up a lot. Um, but you can throw Nick Kaiser in there, and then obviously Deion Yeldon, who's been uh, who's been an absolute beast for us when called upon uh, in years past, man, just uh, going through a little hiccup right now. But uh, outside of that, man, once everybody gets healthy, man, we're going to have a hell of a fucking, a hell of a tight end room uh, moving forward. <laughs> and Travis, to follow up on that, just on a wider scale. A little excited, sorry. <laughs> well, that, that's actually I got back on the stage at Union <laughs> Station again. <laughs> that's actually my question is about your excitement. It's been a weird off season. It's been a long time since you guys have been back out here. But you're back out here in pads now and together as a team. You've turned the page from the Super Bowl last season, now trying to aim for another one this season. Just what's the energy like out here at camp and in the locker room? Oh, man. Uh, I would say it's right where we left off, man, but it's it's picked up even more. Uh, everybody is uh, enthusiastic, very um, very ready to work, eager to work, and that's and that's the best thing and the be- most beautiful thing about it is that everyone is, is they they know the accountability that we need to have. They know the amount of um, focus and uh, and and determination every single day that we need to have about everything. And, and we're just going out there being accountable to each other and just working our tails off for each other uh, right now. And uh, sure enough, you'll, you saw us get after it a little bit today. And it's, it's, not no walk, it's not a walk in the park, man. Both, both sides of the ball are competing, and that's what you love to see. Kels, we'll close it out this way. Last night, they show the Super Bowl again on the NFL <laughs> Network and mic'd up. I'm sitting there watching it with my wife, and we tear up. When you embrace your dad, it's one of the best moments of the whole mic'd up series, I think. And when he was talking to you, that incredible moment for you, we know about your football family and your crazy brother. But that, but also knowing that you burn as much as you did last year to win it again this year. That moment, and even how that propels you into 2020. Man, uh... Yeah, I mean, I spoke about my, my father and the impact he's had on my life and uh, how he's always been there through it all. And um, so blessed, so blessed and so fortunate to have a rock like that at my back, uh, to have my back every single day I walk this earth. Um, just uh, forever thankful for everything he's always done and always been there. Um, and uh, to answer the question, I mean, you just got to you gotta rally with that, man. You got you to gotta feel how, how amazing that moment is and uh and 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 uh amp it up you got to take it to the next level it never stops man that's the beauty about life and the beauty about football is that um it doesn't matter how good you did that last play you know that next one there's going to be a son of a buck coming at you and uh ready to take your head off and you got to be ready for it so you're non-stop growing non-stop learning 
And um, it, right now, the, the team has the mentality of we got some stuff, that, uh, some unfinished business that we have to attend to. And uh, that's what we're doing moving forward. Thanks for the interview. Thanks for your time. Thanks for the way you work, the way you play. But mostly, Matt, we can thank you for being Kels. Yes. We're all blessed because of it. Love you guys, man. The Voice. Kels. Let's get, let's get him rocking, baby.